Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop for another day of working on my very first frame lock folding knife. This is all about jumping in the deep end with no idea what it is that I'm doing and using this as a learning opportunity the whole way across. It's a fun way of learning. It is a pretty time intensive and difficult way of learning, which is why I'm pleased that for those of you that have interest in photography, marketing, business, videography, or design, Skillshare is sponsoring this video and giving you guys three months of membership for just 99 cents. 99 cents, three months of membership. There are 17,000 online courses on Skillshare that you can watch. So make sure you hit the link in the description at the end of the video to get that three month trial. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring the episode. But ladies and gentlemen, I myself have some learning to do here in the workshop. So I'm gonna start getting right to that. So here is what you've seen me do. You have seen me take a facing cut on the end, put a center drill in, use a 5.8 millimeter drill bit, then for the first time ever use a reamer. I halved the speed and doubled the feed. A little bit of Googling told me how to do that. <laughs> this is so much fun. Then I took some cuts along the side of the thing and I brought it down to 10.000 millimeters. Like the most accurate thing that I've ever made. This is just so unbelievably satisfying. Now what I've got to do to finish off these washers is I need to cut them 1.2 millimeters thick with a parting tool that is three millimeters thick. I'm sure it's gonna work out just marvelously once it is that I find the washers when they get dropped into here and I can't find them. <laughs> So out I come here, get rid of this tool, and in we go with a parting off tool. Now, I am having so much fun. I know it's slow going in the videos, but I am having just the m biggest ball of all time making these mistakes and running my way through this stuff. And I say it a lot. But when you see what it is that you knew two days prior, and you feel like you've really achieved a lot in just two days amount of time, in just two days of doing something, it feels amazing. That is nothing like learning. It's, it's such a good feeling. And the incredible thing about machine work that I'm discovering is really, it's like, <laughs> because things are so precise or have the potential to be so precise. All of a sudden, your perspective of the world just changes drastically. You know, it's very difficult for an amateur like myself to get used to what is a tenth of a millimeter, or what is a hundredth of a millimeter, or a thousandth of a millimeter. It doesn't, I, I'm still very, very much struggling to work out what it looks like, what it is, what it feels like, how it affects fit up, and how these tolerances are so important. It's a really weird feeling to just have your perspective of distance and lengths and, 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 and measurements completely flipped upside down. Or rather, I should say, the perspective isn't necessarily flipped upside down, but instead what it is that I mean is it's just shocking to suddenly start thinking about things with such precision. And I'm saying that with like the experience of thinking with, about things in any sort of precision of like two days. So, you know, bear that in mind. But basically what I'm saying is it is just fascinating. You know, it's like, I look at this and it looks like a point, but really now I'm looking at it and I'm like, well, actually that's half a millimeter. How am I gonna use this as a way to we'll find out where the height of this tool is if it's half a millimeter thick? Just crazy having a perspective of distance completely changed all of a sudden. It's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. 
it's crazy stuff. I mean, it's just amazing. Another incredible thing to think about is the fact that literally everything that we use right now and all the time has to be made with tolerances, just of unbelievable precision. <laughs> The iPhone or computer that it is that you're watching this on has to be made with the utmost care to the measurements of the component pieces. The car that you're driving has thousands of parts that have to be made in tolerances that the average person, me, would just have no idea were even possible. You know, it's the hidden magicians of the world that are the machinists that build the things that we enjoy every day without the slightest thought about their making. So to all the machinists of the world that are watching this and very much cringing at what it is that I do, thank you for what it is that you do and the skill that you have to be able to produce the things that we enjoy every day. Because as I delve into this little uh, uh, craft a Rooney here, I realize just how much there is to know and just how difficult and complex it is. So I'm cutting now at 1.22 millimeters in thickness, which will hopefully leave me a little bit to kind of lap off there with some fine grit sandpaper. And I lost it. Hey, little washer, 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 washer. Aha! Found it. Thank goodness, that could have taken a long time. Ah, what fun. So that piece is out of there. Now I'm gonna throw another piece of bronze in there and we're gonna make the, uh, is it called a bushing? I think it's called a bushing. The actual pivot. We're making the actual pivot, that's right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna face this off. We're gonna center drill it. We're gonna drill it out ready for a four millimeter tap. We're gonna tap it to four millimeters. We're gonna turn the outside diameter to six millimeters exactly. Then we're gonna part it off at the right length and it's gonna be done. Let's engage the hyperlapse. So we have now today turned two washers, little thrust bronze bearing type things. I'm sure somebody's gonna tell me what they're actually called. I have no idea. I just said like six words and hopefully it works. We have also turned the actual pivot itself, which has a four millimeter thread going the whole way through. We've also turned the stopping pin. Ah, the stopping pin. We've turned the stopping pin out of steel. It is four millimeters in diameter with a three millimeter thread going the whole way through. We then made ourselves a little fix up in the mill. I drilled 0.2 millimeters shy and then reamed three holes to make this block of steel, which you saw I used to be able to hold the parts flush while I'm working them on this 400 grit sandpaper on the granite block. Now, of course, as I said a few episodes ago, this vise isn't square and so I can't rely on it. So while doing that, I had to make sure that because I had the pieces facing down only on the side where I milled, i.e. I could only work the side that I milled flat and drilled into because then that stuff's all, you know, even it. Ish. Ish. But it's fine, the pieces are tiny. Now, the pieces that were drilled and threaded, of course, developed a little bit of a burr on the inside there. So I then took the 5C collet. Hey, we found a use for it. Put it in a collet block. Hey, finally, finally found a use for the 5C collets. And I'll quickly run the tap back through to clean it all out. Use a drill as a little uh, makeshift countersink. Flip it around. Just make sure it's all nice and clean. There we go. It's good. There we go. One, two, three, four pieces. So I've quickly remounted this up here in the mill sideways, this one scale here. And I drilled a hole up where I center drilled and then did that weird scribey thing yesterday so that we have a hole and some clearance for our slit. 
to go into. And oh my goodness, I am so pleased that there is that little quarter of a millimeter between this and the uh, the ring for the bushing there. We're gonna be okay. And now, I'm actually gonna change this here. So lots of you under my videos were commenting that I should check out Ekim Knives on YouTube. And I thought, well, I mean, lots of people have commented about it. Let's go. He's got a 15 part how to make a folding knife series. How to make a frame lock folding knife. I feel a little silly for not having, uh, not having known that that existed first. Considering I'm a YouTuber, I should probably start YouTubing the projects that I'm about to undertake. Ekim Knives, thank you for producing an incredible video series. Incredibly helpful. Picked up some incredible hints, especially about slitting what it is that we're about to slit. But before we do that, as I said, I'm gonna alter our little spring mechanism here. Because in his videos, he actually described the measurements that you need. He also did it differently to me. He put his piece up sideways and used the side of the mill cutter. I'm gonna keep it like this and I'm just simply gonna lengthen this and I'm going to go about another 10 thousandths deeper with the ball end mill. So now, thanks to the Ekem Knives frame lock tutorial, oh my god, Goodness, are tutorials helpful? Just like, uh, just like the 17,000 that you can get access to if you go to the link in the description below and get your three month membership of Skillshare for just 99 cents. Anyway, back to this. Thanks to his tutorial, I have milled this out here. This incredible pocket. And I've milled it down to 49 or 50 thousandths of an inch. It is now time to use our slitting saw. <laughs> and now, look at this little nifty trick. Drop that in there, hold it down, yeah, give it a little bit of a mm, tighten. Ah, tighten a root. And now it is time for some good and bad news. The good news, 9 a.m. this morning, my slitting saws showed up. 14 hours after ordering them, pretty incredible. The bad news, I wanted a really like fine tooth. I got the fine size tooth option that they had. This isn't where I usually get the slitting saws, so they said 80 teeth. I figured 80 was a lot. 80, in fact, still leaves us a rather undesirably coarse blade. This is gonna make the process of slitting these pieces even more difficult. We've gotta be extremely careful with our feed. But the other piece of good news, third piece of good news, <laughs> I get to use the tool that I made up yesterday in the last episode. So anyway, we will try it. On we go to the arbor. Oh, look how cute it is. Did you see me make this? If you didn't see me make this, it's probably because you're unsubscribed. So make sure you hit subscribe below. We're gonna give that a little tighten. We'll tighten it last. Into the collet. Into the mill. Up with the wrench. Tighten a rear. There we go. And we will now see if this contraption will work. So, here we go. I'm now two hundredths of a millimeter into the material, gently working my way across. Had a little mishap there in the metal, <laughs> going down with the knee of the mill instead of raising it up. But I'm now on my scribe line, and I'm gonna work to these holes and go back and forth, taking my sweet, sweet time, making sure that we don't break too many more of these, uh, these little zip disks here, these little slitting disks. <laughs> we have one slit going down it. It took so long, but it's fine. Cause that means that we can now fully open up this spring by cutting laterally across here. I'm gonna mount this in the vise, gripping it vertically and as low down as possible. So we can really minimize the vibrations and the chatter. When I was making this slot here, there was a lot of chatter. I had to lower it down at one point. Lesson learnt. Keep that as low as physically possible without running the bottom of this tool into the vise. Thank <laughs> you. 
with our springy mawatsit cut out across the side here. <laughs> we are starting to get closer to having the folding knife, but of course we're gonna need our spacer to be ready. And so what you've seen me do is I put this plate back here in our off-square vise. I milled across the plate to create a flat surface. I super glued on our spacer. I milled that down to a little bit above what it is that the final dimension needs to be. I then super glued on one of the scales like this, which means that with a little lick of the drill, I can transfer the hole through. There we go. Which means that now our spacer is ready for drilling and tapping. 1.6 millimeter hole, M2 tap. <laughs> oh boy, what have I got myself into this time? So before I tap those holes, let's talk a little bit about design because you've obviously been seeing me design this knife and the knife before with Adobe Illustrator, which is like, a, it's, a, it's great for making t-shirt designs and things like that, but it's not really CAD software. It's not great for designing things that have to move and then designing things in three dimensions to get a proper picture of what it is that you're making and how the mechanism's gonna work. Making this folding knife, if I'd started with a CAD drawing, as you all very well commented, thank you. I would have been in a much better spot. The problem is, one, I didn't have CAD software. I just changed that. I just got myself Fusion 360 CAD software. Two, I have no idea how to use it, but there is a great solution to that, which is I'm actually gonna be using an online course from Skillshare, which is gonna teach me how to use Fusion 360 so that I can, in the future, build up a proper 3D mock-up of the things that I'm gonna make, or 2D mock-up as it may be. It should be a much better way to take the ideas I have in my head, put them on paper, and then be able to go into the steel by having these proper renderings. And this, of course, is why I'm so pleased that Skillshare is such a great sponsor of the channel, because I now get to have access to this incredible platform that has 17,000 online courses, just like this one here that I'm gonna take to teach me how to use Fusion 360. But Skillshare is giving you guys three months access to their platform for only 99 cents. But you gotta make sure that you hit the link in the description to get access to that. It's a wonderful way to support this channel. Skillshare sponsoring us is what allows us to, to be in this workshop and bring you along and you going there to learn whether it is that you want to learn how to use Fusion 360 like me, whether you want to learn how to use Adobe Illustrator, whether you want to learn about business or marketing, Skillshare is the place to do it. 99 cents for three months. There's a link in the description. I'd love it if you'd hit that link. I'd love it if you would hit subscribe to this channel because I can't wait to bring you along with this incredible journey that is learning. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Skillshare. I'm going to see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.